Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be back home. Amen. I want to appreciate everyone. I also appreciate uh, those that came with me. Thank you that they have introduced them. I have to introduce my wife, uh, Professor Agmoiko. You have to be with me this evening. <laughs> Amen. We will be leaving out to quickly attend to some things, so don't worry. Don't mind my voice, eh? You will hear the word. Amen. <laughs> Are we here together? Let me see your smile now. The only thing I always used to know nice people is the smile they give me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Shall we please just let's just let's let's stand up a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to just, let's speak in tongues a, mi a minute or two. Let's just speak in tongues. Let's exercise ourselves in, a, in, a, in a, the language of the heavens. Me brinda librando sobre canamanado shi satayala. Lord, we worship your name. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we honor you. Blessed be your name, Lord. Lord, thank you. Release your breath, breath of life into this moment. Help us to perceive you right. Lord, grant us grace to hear your word. Make your word to come simple. That the babes and mistress will understand your voice. Lord, speak to us. Holy Spirit, guide our thought. Grant utterance, grant entrance into your world. Lord, thank you for the last section. Thank you for using your servants to enrich us this morning. Lord, I pray that this section, use it to enrich us in a dimension we have never experienced it before. Thank you, Father. We worship and exalt you. Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let the church say amen. amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Lord, we lift up this gathering unto you. Speak to us. Guide us with instructions. Lord, inspire our heart. Grant us access to your world. Help us to perceive you right. Lord, let it be applicable. Let it be clear the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And amen. May be seated as we put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. The, the uncle that just finished, I thank God for his life. Amen. One of the rules here is, please, Let's be attentive. Movement limit. Just limit every movement so that we will not be distracted. I know you want, you invited me all the way from Akure uh, to be your servant. So I'm ready to serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Who can tell me the topic? The topic I'm going to handle now. Who can tell me the topic? Oh, yes, they don't know the topic. Uncle Ink, I sorry. I hope your name is Uncle Inka. All right. <laughs> Uncle Inka was a, a national secretary. Then. Please don't don't let me use them as if it's too far. We are still very young. Amen. All right. T.S., please, can you? Is it that they don't know the topic? All right. Okay. No, they're supposed to know the topic. This thing. People are escorting Abi. All right. 
Amen. 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 I can't see it in the projector. I'm only seeing LTC. Can you please project it, please? Hallelujah. Mentoring in discipleship. Exactly. Mentoring in discipleship. The principle of mentoring in discipleship. Like, can we say it together? The principle of mentoring in discipleship. Let's say it again. It looks long. We want to just discover the act that brings us the strength of discipleship, the strength of being like Christ. I want to see when you talk of mentor, what does it mean? What are the principles, the elements? And we we'll look at a little bit to understand that if you have a mentor, it's not only existing maybe on, in books or uh, somebody you just admire maybe outside the country, maybe as far as U.S. and you are here, never had a personal contact. You say, that is my father in the Lord and all that. You want to look at that principle. What makes for the strength that helps to build us in the beauty of God? Amen. Now, we want to look at this principle. What to start from? Uh, Jesus who taught us. Mark chapter 3 verse 13 to 15. We'll read that. Then maybe I will just read some others so that we can have a very good breath of what we want to do. Oh, I read. He goeth up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would. And they carry, they came unto him. He ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. So from this point, we could define this strength as Jesus, who went to the mountain, invited those he wanted, and he ordained them. He brought them to be closer to him in attempt to learn, just like a student, a lecturer apprentice and his master bringing people intentionally making your interest established in connecting with people that you think we need the grace that makes for what you are making that grace to become the conviction of these people and you teaching them, nurturing them after the manner of Christ. Now, when you say mentor or mentoring discipleship, I think they're trying to give us an idea of making sure that we have people who should bring us to realize the need why we need to be nurtured. Why we need to learn things that pertains to what the master you are taking after is desiring of you. Amen. Now, I'm trying to establish a fact 
from this point, we saw Jesus who have to go to the mountain to make a choice of people he so desired. And he made a choice after praying all night. To tell you the seriousness of having an idea, you desire a people that will take after you in that idea. And that idea becomes a formation of their conviction that makes for a purpose in their life and make for their thought and their everything to become and to be enveloped in the strength of what you so desire to make others to reflect. Now, Jesus brought these 12, and these 12, they were with him in order to learn. So, when you are with a mentor, it is designed for you to learn. An apprentice may not have paper or take paper and buy or to write anything, but through observation, there are so many things that gives us insight into knowing what the master had known. So that with the life the master lived, we will be tailored or will be established in that conviction that becomes the life we live. Am I speaking? You know what? Jesus called the twelve. But if you notice what happened in Esther, chapter 2, maybe from verse 5 to 7, you saw Esther lost the parents early enough in life. But what happened? His uncle discipled her, mentored her, was able to make clear to her vision of what makes a Jew a Jew. And that became everything about her life. And became the way she approaches things from that conviction. Became the decoration of her purpose. Seeing life from the point of value of that conviction. That is what Jesus wanted to turn out in the disciples. That is why he brought them together to nurture them. It's my prayer that you be in manifest. All that we are learning to become like Christ, may they become a formation we will take out there to demonstrate in our world the place of our work in the way we regard things and the view the point or the world view we maintain our conviction everywhere we go the essence of life and everything about us we show to us that indeed we are a disciple indeed in everything about our life we have been here we have been here and have been taught and uh, one of the things I, 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 I just recognize in the strength of Paul ministry is that he knew the conviction that brought him to that establishment of being like Christ. And the moment he saw it in the life of brethren in Corinth, in the life of brethren in Ephesians, and it's on other places, he now said, anytime you want to write a letter, send me the grace of the Almighty God. I commit to the grace of the Almighty when it's finishing. But the strength of it is, it said, oh, I recognize your faith in Christ Jesus. And that has become everything about all that you do and reflect. How? That had brought love that makes you, that make it possible to express the kind of God's love and this love you are expressing, I could see it from the point of your faith in Christ because of your hope for eternity. So when you have this stuff that becomes everything about you, 
you will discover that as a student now, your faith in Christ will help you to decide what become what you are committed to in your studies, in your business, in your outfit, in the way you do things, in the way you accept people. It now becomes a revelation of your faith in Christ Jesus. That hope will make for your heart to burn to go out in love. In love. In expression of the nature of God. So that is the strength Paul wants to see in the lives of brethren. Not because I am a Jew. So because I'm a Jew, to, to make you to become a Jew like me, you must circumcise. If you, get, if, you get, if you cannot get circumcised, I can't see you as a Jew. You are not perfect. No. But Paul was telling them, like Jesus was teaching them, the reality of life. It is known by the rituals. It is not by the activities. It is not by position. It is not by fame. It is not by what you wear. It is not by the class you are. It is not by any other thing. But the strength of it is your faith in Christ, your love for the saints, and your hope for eternity. When those things can reflect his beauty, then such a person is a disciple. Amen. Am I speaking? Hallelujah. So, if you have this strength, now we'll, let's start a business. If you have the strength, your faith in Christ, take the rule of your life, dominate your intent, make for your conviction, and build your worldview, and make the flesh to be redundant, and worldliness not to have any sway around you. And satanic forces cannot dare you to scatter your thought and your plan for, I mean your faith. Your faith will be rooted, established, and you are so, so convinced. So when those things become the formation, that is the point we want to start. Jesus was telling the disciples, this is it. And everything that was happening around Jesus, they were means to teach the disciples what actually the kingdom of heaven was meant to understand, to, to, to know what the kingdom of heaven was meant for. And in every of their actions, their discussions, their, the way they eat, the way they look at things, and the way they look at position, everything became a means of Jesus trying to mentor them. This is not right. If you want to be a leader, this is not the way. The Gentiles and the unbelieving world can see position from the place of authority and the place where you sit and all that. But no, if you want to be great amidst you, be one that serves. I want to establish this fact so that you understand that it is not the big place you are in. It's not the big car you ride. It's not the big house you stay. It's not the costly attires you wear that determines the measure of the presence of God you command, or uh, the things of God you stand to represent as in not no, it's not at all. We are being told here, Paul said, I can't all those things are done. Are they important? They are very important. They are important in this strength. Reveal your faith in Christ. It makes for your love for people to become so vibrant and your hope of eternity to be very sure. You approach everything else to make sure that your eternity door is not closed. Am I speaking? I want us to understand that very clearly. Do we understand that? Do we understand that? Amen. Now, what is our duty here? Number one, if we have this, we have been told to reproduce it in others. Can we please look at second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2.
become something to the body of Christ. But look at it. When the Lord Jesus reached him, he needed somebody to mentor him. Can you remember Barnabas? Eh? Are we here? Uh, one of the rules of this message, of this place is, please, if I'm preaching, movement strikes me. As much as you can help me to do, except for the technical people, yes, I understand that thing. The ushers, I understand that. But let movement move. Thank you. Are we here? Hallelujah. 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 Now, let's look at some types of discipleship. Or maybe I call it mentorship. Uh, which I feel is very important. There are three types I, I, I want to recommend. But it's only one that is actual. The one that is actual is one-on-one -on -one mentoring or discipleship. One on one discipleship. If you look at what the Paul said in that two, second, second Timothy chapter two, verse two. So the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same coming thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Now, if you look at First Corinthians chapter eleven, can we please turn to it? First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. He said, "Be ye followers of me, even as I also I am of Christ." Can you see that? That means you are following Christ already. Is it true? That means your faith in Christ is confirmed. So. Your duty is pick one person. Don't spread yourself so thin. Like Jesus would do. Jesus, as I mean, as the almightiness he is, he only made a choice of twelve to disciple at a time. And he did it and faced them one on one. Can you remember how he was picking on each of them in their errors and correcting them? Can you remember, because he was so close to them, he could perceive what was going on in their heart, even when they would not speak to him. Am I speaking? Am I speaking? So if you are one-on-one -on -one with someone, you can easily read or understand and know the person, personal, close. He can't have anywhere to hide. If, for instance, I'm discipling somebody when I was in my face, I remember sometimes my house could be as many as 21 people. Three bedroom flat. Uh, what happens? I don't invite people who seems to be the people that knows the thing very well. No, I don't disturb myself. They have known it. How many of us are from X to here? All right. Thank you. Your fellowship was one of the fellowship that were always coming to our correct. They will feel my my, my flat that time. And when they come, I'll make sure I see them one on one addressing issues. The, those issues are issues I want to trust God to use the Bible to change the paint, the intent, the content, so that when the content of the Bible takes off the content that were there before, you will discover that the strength they will now carry out of that place will be the grace and the glory of the strength in the content of God's word. Am I speaking? Amen. So, you have to have one-on-one -on -one discipleship with people. If, for instance, like my friend now, like he is around me here, there are things I have seen in him now that he may not have told me that I have known. Why? Because I have fixed him on one on one. And on one on one, we look at our eyes, eyes contact direct. If I have any ulterior motive, he will understand that this guy is he actually true? What is in the heart? If I'm speaking what is not in my heart, it can be read. Is it true? But 
Thank you, sir. If, for instance, I called that my sister at the very last, he can't see my eye direct. If though is even good, that is the second one. The distance mentoring. Where you, you may not be in the same city with the one that is your mentor. But you have to work to make sure that you are in contact and you are in touch. Either by reading, by calling, or by him inviting, or you looking for ways to just have access to the core values you think the heavens are represented in this life. Now, the same strength, you may not have the grace to mentor so many people at the same time. You, just like Jesus did, if you remember, he picked three persons to be closer to him than the rest. Is it true? Am I speaking? Amen. So, why so? He said, be ye followers of me as I am. Do you understand that? Amen. Amen. So, it's intentional. We'll come to that later. But let me quickly end up here. The third mentor or type of mentoring. Uh, I think, let me consult with my friend. Hallelujah. I thought I've known it so much. Okay, group mentoring. Just like now, I'm standing in your front to teach you group mentoring. So much can be said, but so little can be received. You may not have the access for a direct contact with the person, but you hear the person, you try to interpose what the person is saying, to perceive what he's saying. That clarity that is not there will exist in what you represent. Sometimes, what I say may be a little bit different from what you understand because the, uh, the exposure and ex ex experience, you know, it makes us to interpret the message you interpret. Is it true? Is it true? Am I speaking? Amen. If I see phone in your hand, I hope you are not recording or you are just WhatsApp me. Amen. Hallelujah. What are the pillars in mentoring in discipleship? We've seen it in Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Number one, those that Jesus wanted. Don't look around to someone else. Make sure the person did not speak. Please write if you can if you can write. Jesus called those. He wanted those he will pay close attention to, or those he will give undivided attention to, or those that needs that have a heart and a desire for God, those that will be painted to stand out that is hungry, those that are longing for God, those that are hungry for God, those that are consciously committed, sometimes they may not know, but they just do what they do by reason of the knowledge they lack. And because of the knowledge they lack, that is the place where you have to occupy. Sit them down like Aquinas and Priscilla, teach you know the person. Amen. Apollos, teach him. You know the scripture to the point of John the Baptist. But this is his strength. He is a good teacher of the world. But he had a limited knowledge. So he needed to be mentored in order to become a strength. Hello? Hello? Do you know what happened? When Moses was giving birth to, the mother had to trash him inside the sea, Abby, the waters. And the daughter of Pharaoh picked him. And when he was picked, the daughter of Pharaoh, the sister of Moses, came to the daughter of Pharaoh. Do you want a Hebrew woman to help you? 
to take care of this child and nurse it for you? He said, yes. What does that, what do you think that could mean? It could mean that this boy, if he's taken away at that time, a person that didn't know anything about his life will not be able to channel this child in the strength of life. And because of that, oh, she knew is one of the child from the Jewish woman. Call me that woman. And the woman was called. The mother was called. Now the mother gave him orientation that gave him a conviction early in life that even in the palace, he didn't see palace as a place of pleasure. He saw palace as a place that he does not belong to. Why? The interest, the heart. If you have to disciple anybody, one of the pillars that will help is be interested in that person. If I say interested in that person, I'm not saying as a sister, go and disciple a man that will become your husband. No. Or disciple a, a sister that will become your wife. No. Sometimes that can happen, but that is not the rule. Am I speaking? Are we here? The way you are looking is like I should stop. Some of us are sitting down as if we are not getting anything. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, let me not drop that story. If you notice what happened to Moses, all through and true, his expression and attention were not the things he was receiving. But he was all out. His heart was out for the Israelites. His people. So he had been tutored. He had been mentored to see, to know that these are his people and his life is designed to bring about their liberation. So I am thinking how come that Joseph could have such a conviction that kept him even everywhere and disadvantaged position he found himself. He knew that the presence of God is all that you need in life. Nothing else. So that became his commitment. That became his zeal. That became the thing that directed his steps and guide his decisions. So what you have to do is don't teach anybody how to preach. Teach them how to live the life. With the life they live, their life will preach. Know what? Nobody, it wasn't Joseph that recommended himself. Is it true? It was people that had experience with his life. And if you have the life, the experience must be there. And when the experience comes, it comes because you are somebody that was interested in you had kindled your interest and you are now interested in what the person is interested in. Amen. So number one pillar is you must have interest in someone. Uh, you must be able to give attention and your undivided uh, loyalty and commitment to that person. Number two is in investment. You must be ready to invest. It's costly, but you have to do so. You have to empower. You have to enrich. You have to take time to pray for this person you are discipling. Take time to build yourself. So that you have what to give to the person. Take time to know what the Lord is saying. That is very important. And anyway, by the time you get into God's presence and your conviction remains there, everything you do, it will be by the Spirit. Am I speaking? Amen. We'll get to know that later. Then, the third one is... Be ready to be involved in such a life. Look at Jesus. Despite that Peter was a fisherman, mind you, tax collector. How 
the, all kinds of people were with him. Look at Judah is carrot. Despite his intentions, Jesus knew he was stealing from the box. And yet, he was still involved. He didn't snatch, hey, remove him from that place. No. He was still empowering, trying. Look at what happened now. Saul, who became Paul. Amen. Don't give up on anybody. It may not physically be involved, but spiritually be involved. Connect. How? Pray. Sow the seed of the world. Study to speak. Just, just be interested in the needs and the lives of that person. Do you know what? I think I said it some time ago. That the needs and challenges in the lives of people are the place available for you to occupy. That's why Jesus told us, occupy till I come. I want to ask you, what are you using to occupy? To act for him. To act out the grace you have received. How many people have come to the point where you got to and you release yourself? I mean, you, you are able to uh, not to be overtaken by small, small distractions. Am I speaking? So you need to be involved. You need to be active participation in the life of this person. Am I speaking? You have to be very active. That is involvement. Then you need to inculcate the knowledge of what you believe. Bring the person to the point of understanding what we live for. What we are here to do. What God meant to be. Hello. Some people, they want, <laughs> some people run after men because of what they need. Abi. But being able to teach, it is no men that matters here. It's the presence of God. If you look at all the men of old, is it Mordecai? Is it Joseph? What brought difference between the life of Saul and Paul? Well, is what? The presence of God. Now, by your life, let the person see it and cherish that the presence of God is what all I need. Not the hundred days fast that will not attract God's presence. Not the life of head calculation that would, you know, be very clever and wise like Solomon and yet ended the very life. Am I speaking? But someone that will take God's presence as everything about life. Is it true? Amen. Am I speaking? Hallelujah. So, Jesus brought them to teach them. Abby? So that they can be like him in order for them to go and represent him to the world. And the last one there is the last pillar is inspiration. You are there to inspire people. You are there that when they are down, when things, things seem not to work in the way they know, since you are tall, they are inspired. They are quickened. Their downcast heart is lifted. All the impossibility that seems to be there, they have become possible. You make it just easy to be frank with you to relate with God is the easiest thing in life. And that's the easiest life to live. That's the, that the short life. Do you know what? If you know God, Goliath, War of Jericho, Dead Sea, no matter the king that team up against you, no matter the lion and the bear, if you know God, then they are nothing to you. Now, what brought me to that point is just to let you know your faith is everything that you need. Why? By it, men of old, saints, they obtain good reports. By it, the war was framed. So if it's by faith, what is wrong with me, self? Why am I not discovering this? then that will push him or her to go and study, to ask for grace for an increased faith. 
Am I speaking? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if you believe, you have faith and belief. If you believe, you will say to this mountain, move yonder. Abi, it will be so according to your faith, Abi. There's something that Lamb sent me. He said in Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3, towards the end, he said, he hold everything in life by the power of his word. So, if I know this word now, that means the fullness of God is accomplished in my life. Am I speaking? Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing that word have I hid in my heart. That will not see. Somebody that will be struggling with sin is hearing all these things. What will what would that person do? The person will go and take seriously. Or somebody that have a heart challenge. Maybe you open up Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. And his word is a means to heal us, to keep us strong. It's a defense. And by the time the person leaves you, friend, the person wants to go and discover what you discover. And do you know what happens? You have just brought the person to a point of having access to the revealed world. Once we can have access to the revealed world, that becomes the life of the spirit in us to energize us, to blast out the nonsense devil. Hallelujah. Am I speaking? Say, I am the head and not the tail. What does that mean to you as a student? I remember this testimony years back in then as soon as soon I forgot the name of the Then back. Is it 2020? I mean 2000. 2000. Year 2000. No. It should be 2002. I've left my first day. Yes. 2002. I was invited to come and minister when they were in the exam following the exam. And I went there. And as I was ministering, the Lord whispered to me, that there was somebody who had never gotten an A before. That he put in for seven courses and he's going to clear for the first time A's. Everybody, you know, shouted amen. Me, I spoke, I left. By the time I came back, unfortunately for me, that was the day they read the letter. The person that got that seven A's was from Redeem, RCF. Because the uh, people were invited that time. And they got it. Next time, they invited me again to come and preach. <laughs> I said, no, it's not me being invited. What did I mention? It's because I had God's word. Go and listen to the revealed word. If you can listen to the revealed word, you are praying even much more than me. That is what changed Saul, who became Paul. The word was opened. And the revelation became his life. Hi, is my prayer. None of us will read the Bible like letters. But we'll read the Bible by our spirit. And the Bible will be opened. In the name of Jesus. There was somebody also. He testified in our church some days ago. He said, he had never, the best result he had ever had was 4.43. And it has not worked. First class. He told me that. I said, don't worry. From now, you've gotten it. Come out with first class. He said, amen. In, he, he saw his result in his 500 level first semester. It was somebody that saw him and called him. How come you had five dots? I said, wow. And I remember that somebody did. I said, the person that declared is not a big doubt. It's because you received the revelation and became your life. That's what you need. So, people need that inspiration in our generation. Because several things are going wrong. And they are not right. You see somebody who would have succeeded in committing fornication and come and sing and say, God moves. And people by emotion, they fall down. No, that's not the life. If it's not the life of God, 
by reason of God's word, who become, become our lives, it's not of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Rituals may be there, but they are not. Am I speaking? Hallelujah. Are we here? All right. What are the elements? We've seen from that Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Number one. We also see that in Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Number one, be fully present and active. That, that element is, no matter how occupied you are, when you are mentoring somebody, give the person a quality time. A quality time where you pay attention fully to that person so you can understand what God is saying that time. In order to know what to say, as by, by reason of perceiving what God is doing. Because each season is for a time. Each season is for a reason. Am I speaking? Amen. Look at what happened. If Saul had not met with Christ on his way to Damascus, what would have happened? There would have been disaster of different kinds. Abi? But it is encounter with Christ. Change the whole thing. Turn the game upside down against those that planned it. Because there were people that gave him the letter. Abi. But when they saw it, they now team up together to kill him. But God defended him. Am I speaking? So, number one element is don't, because you may not have different, you may not have time. That time may not come. Am I speaking? Amen. That opportunity may not come. When it comes, it comes a different means, a different way that you will not have time to do what you would have done that time. I don't know whether I'm speaking. Amen. So, you, when you look at Jesus, despite that he was so occupied with every series of things, he must have time with disciples. That's why we tell them to you, it must be unveiled. To them, it must be in parable. Am I speaking? Why was he doing that? Intentionally, because it was available for them to be questioned. Am I speaking? So you must be what? Available, be fully present and active. But this is what I was saying that time. A distance or group mentoring cannot enjoy this strength. Am I speaking? So that's why if you want a mentor, for instance, like you, or you want to make a mentor, if you want a mentor, make sure you get a mentor. You can easily reach, and I can tell you the truth, and tell your life. It may change or speak to you the truth purely. The mind of God. What God wants you to hear in the moment. Don't go to people that will raise your shoulder high to crash land you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Tell some, that, hey, go to somebody that can tell you the truth. There are people who run away from me. Why? This guy, I don't fear anybody. Do you know why? This opportunity I have now, you know I'm telling us the truth. This opportunity I have now, I may not have it again. I thank God for the tears that invited me. Amen. And if I miss this period, this my brother, I may never come across him in life. But so far, if what I'm saying is spirit and is affecting spirit, he will never forget me in life. Like Uncle Yinka. Amen. Amen. Am I speaking? Choir, are you here? And some people are sleeping there. Please wake up. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, number one. What is the number one there? The element. Thank you. Number two, focus the section in pressing issues. When you have time with people, don't treat trivial issues. Let the moment, the time be valued. By making sure that you are directing 
your questions to needs that are actually needs. Not somebody coming to you. You know, this is my shoe. You know, I got it from US. This is my wristwatch. No, 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 no. Those things will come and go. But the essence of our life is in God. Either in material things or in the flesh or in God. Abby? Am I speaking? Amen. Amen. So when somebody comes, it's not the time to brag about your iPhone. The time to talk of your faith in Christ, your love for people, and your hope for eternity. It's a time to make for what that person needs. Sometimes you may be thinking, is that the only thing from my faith in Christ? I can discuss issue of relationship. Is it true? I can discuss issue of ideal relationship or marriage issues. I can discuss it and bring to bear the ideals of God that will come become a conviction that will make the person to have a new horizon in everything the person from that time will be doing. Am I speaking? Amen. So, learn to focus on what the things are, not what the ones are. Very important. For instance, somebody came around me one time and we were discussing. It was one of those people we discussed together. And um, the Lord just changed the story. Do you know what? I never knew I was directly hitting the needs of that person. After the person left, he looked at me. He said, sir, I'm happy that I came. Every other thing we did, good. But this particular one was a hit. I said, wow. If I have not prayed, I intentionally wait to provide that time for that person. That water would have flowed, expressed, and yet no return. Am I speaking? So once you make issues your focus, you just discover that you are able to maximize the time you have. Hallelujah. Then the other one, the third one is, is the third one now. Ask direct but open-ended question. Now who is this? What? Is, no, no, no. Questions that will open up the person. That will make the person to explain some issues. If you are discipling or mentoring anybody, don't just cut the head, the head and leave the roots. Start from the roots. If the root remains, no matter what you do up, it will still bring, come back again. Am I speaking? Amen. I, 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 was, I was dealing with somebody who had a um, canon challenge. And... Um, the person, I pray for the person. So I discovered that the person that recommended this said, Sir, this person needs this, needs this. I said, I know. But the first discussion is not to be done, that one at all. And before the second discussion, the Lord released in my heart a book to send to her to read. If she finishes that book, she will know that to the, the deliver from the flesh is first important. And once the power of the flesh is dealt with, you will discover that sin of lying would have gone. Is it true? Sin of fornication would have gone. Abby? Sin of, sin of deceit and supplanting. If you look at what happened to Jacob, everything died. The same thing happened to Saul who became Paul. Everything he was doing before that time cut off total as if he wasn't there before. Why? The right thing, the right cord was struck and he was delivered from it. Amen. So when you are discipling people, don't just release yourself to the common things. You treat it for the roots, the flesh, worldliness, satanic persuasions. They can't help. By the time the person can see that, 
you see that you have been able to zero the person on this or affecting Christ that will energize his love for people and that will make for his hope of eternity to be sure. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This time flies. Ask direct questions. Don't be ashamed. Hmm? Like, I went to minister in the crusade. And somebody who wanted attention just went there and sat down anyhow. Sister, don't sit down anyhow when you are in any group like this. Sit down well. Comport yourself. Am I speaking to sisters? Comport yourself well. So he went because he wanted somebody who is mightily used of God to become his or her husband. I mean, her husband. I said, this one don't miss out today. I, I arranged myself, packaged myself well to let the person know that I came for a serious business. And when it was time for her for counseling, I told her I don't want to see you. She was crying. I said, why are you crying? When this is your heart, this is your heart, this is your heart. The people have known. Me, I didn't know that people have known. By the time I finished up, everything about her was opened up. And that became a point of an encounter with God. Am I speaking? Your speaking direct, asking direct questions can confront the weakness of that person. Can you remember what Jesus did with Paul? Or who was who Saul? Why are thou persecuting me? Direct question. Abby, what happened? Who are you, Lord? So what will you have me do? Can you see it? That is a sequence. Am I speaking? Hallelujah. Then the next one is tell your story if necessary. How you were, the Lord helped you to overcome so many things. Then share the conversation. Don't let it be one monologue. Let it be dialogue. Share it. Allow the person to speak. Air out his or her mind. Listen patiently. Then another element is follow through. If there is any commitment on your side, I will pray along with you on this issue. I will, I will do this, I will do that. Make sure you follow through with your decisions. Amen. And the last one is be encouraging and be action-oriented. Let your move, not just like today now, I'm expecting us, as you live here, somebody that have not gotten to your level, you reach out to that person, so that will bring it to the, person, to the level you are now, that made you to abandon the world, the flesh, and Satan. Am I speaking? And you know what to do. Create time and make sure that this person is rich for Jesus. Hallelujah. What are the principles? Before the principle, there are three tools. I have explained them before. I will just mention them so that I can go straight. The first two I mentioned was prayer. The second one was I, I mentioned is the word. And the last one I mentioned, don't worry, I'll watch my time. Thank you, sir. The last one I mentioned was the spirit. The spirit of God must be in charge. I think I mentioned those ones. I believe you understand what I'm saying. What you need is not your giftings. Even when they are important. What you need to establish or mentor people is the word of God. Tell somebody the word of God. Say it again. Number two, prayer. You must pray. And number three, you must walk by the spirit. Those three tools, they are too important. In the hand of a disciple. Amen. So what are the pillars? Number one. You look at what Jesus did. Teaching them what they're supposed to know. The first pillar, means the first principle is counseling. Cancel. If you can teach people not to start an issue or a thing, it's very easy for them not to do it. I remember somebody, a man of God, who was giving testimony. He said, when he was growing, he was told three things. Keep off from the strength fame brings. Keep
keep off from the power of money and be careful with opposite sex. Those three things, those three cancers help to guide this man away from being overtaken by money, by position, and by women. Every time there seems to be that order, remember that cancer. Quickly put yourself in order. In order to maintain his faith in Christ, his, his total love for people, and his hope for eternity. Am I speaking? Amen. So, you, when, a mentor, when you are mentoring someone, or when somebody is mentoring you, they're supposed to give you counsel, not necessarily advice. Advice is left to you. But when the person exposed the word of God, I will pray it, and by the Spirit of God is lead, is lead, is lead, is led to take care of you. Then be sure the counsel that will come will be in accordance with what the assignment of heaven is for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I still continue? Is it, is it okay? Hallelujah. So, cancel is very important. Now, if you cancel, if you look at Jesus, at each point in time, always canceling the disciples. Then, another thing, second one, principle, is a principle of correction. Don't be afraid to correct anyone. There are people who could be very stubborn, who could be very arrogant, who could be very proud, who could be very knowledgeable. It is you that have to bring the person to the level of submission to the Lord Jesus. And of course, if you need that help, also look for someone who will be able to look at you and correct you without fear? Am I speaking? Now, if you are open, please, this is not possible in a distant mentoring or group mentoring. It's only possible when it is one-on-one. -on -one. Don't say, my mother is my father in the Lord, so you can't tell me anything. No, no. How many of us have ever seen him on one-on-one? -on -one? Nobody. You have seen it on video, have you? Almost all of us have listened to the message before. Eh? But do you know the, the, the most important thing about our life? When we are not on pulpit, and you see all the way we do, then you can actually understand who we are. Ocean is different. Utterance could be different. But what I will be doing with the reality of my life, and the way my, or my decisions and choices and my worldview, and my response, and reactions to things, they are all means to correct you. Am I speaking? So when things that happen to you that make it to here, happens to that person, how will the person respond? You are learning. If you notice, the closeness of the disciples to Jesus made them to have access to a lot of things. Where Jesus sleeps, where he prays, everything he does, where, you know, everything, everything. There was nothing. What to eat and all that and all that. Am I speaking? Amen. The, the next one is connection. You have to seek to connect. And it is when you connect, then you can have the last one will be champion. Now, let me quickly say this. Can we remember Connection. After correction, connection. Amen. Can you remember what happened to the men that were destitute? There were people that came to, is it 600 or 500, that came to David who just allowed us to stay with you. And they were debtors, destitute. People don't want to have anything to do with them. Most, David had them to himself. And after a time, what happened? The life, the champion in David rubbed on them. And they became champion. Is it true? They became theory. They can't see anything. Oh, I want to drink the water out of bed from better. Two men 
entered the garrison of Perisa. They went to bring the water. Ha! David said, no, I can't drink this water. It's the blood of this man. They pour it as a sacrifice. Why? Because they have seen David daring anything. So by so doing, that is a principle of infusing all that you are into somebody else. That is why I said, your life preaches more than your words. Your words can be, can be so loud. And yet, your actions is louder than that voice that is preventing people from hearing what you are saying. Am I speaking? Amen. Amen. Shall we please stand?